السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وكنتين إن شاء الله تعالى with the fiqh of worship and we're talking about the rulings of الإمامة the rulings that pertains to the imam and صلاة الجماعة in general صلاة الجماعة involves صلاة الإمام and the masbuk or the I'm sorry the ma'mum and the ma'mum when he's behind the imam there are certain rulings that are applied to him. And when the ma'mum comes late and he finishes, the imam finishes the salah, and the ma'mum gets up to continue or to complete his salah, he's not ma'mum anymore. He becomes munfarid or someone that prays alone, or they call him al-masbuq, the one that comes late. And as we have talked before that al-masbuq, or the one that comes late, uh, without going into the differences of opinions, whenever position the imam is in, the ma'mum coming to the salah should join the imam. And the Prophet والسلام, he made it very clear. If you heard the iqama, then be in state of tranquility. Do not, that means do not run, do not rush. فما أدركتم فصلوا وما فاتكم فأتموا. Which means whatever you adraktum, whatever you get from the salah, then you pray it, reached, and whatever you missed, then you completed. And the meaning of which is that you consider the first thing that you entered the salah in is your first rak'ah. So as we know that for a person to make it for the rak'ah, he has to reach the salah, he has to be in the position with the imam in ruku'ah. And if the imam gets up from the ruku'ah, that means the rak'ah doesn't count. So for the rak'ah to count, the person has to be there behind the imam, saying after he said Allahu Akbar standing, which is a pillar of the salah, then he says another Allahu Akbar, and he goes into ruku'ah with the imam. The imam, that's all before the imam gets up from the ruku'ah. If a ma'mum, if the follower comes in, and he, the imam is in ruku'ah. So uh, let me take this from the beginning, I'm sorry. If the ma'mum comes and the imam is in standing in the first rak'ah or second rak'ah or whatever there is, and the ma'mum stand behind him and he says Allahu Akbar and he joins the salah, this, this rak'ah that he's in counts, right? And if he, come, he gets in and the imam is in ruku'ah and the ma'mum comes in and he stands in the line, and he raises his hand and says, Allahu Akbar, this is takbiratul ihram, to start the salah. Then to raise his hand another time to say, Allahu Akbar, to go for the ruku'ah. And once he become in ruku'ah position, the imam is supposed to be still in the ruku'ah position for the rak'ah to count. If the person said, Allahu Akbar, standing, and after he said this, he entered the salah. But before he gets to ruku'ah, the imam starts coming up from ruku'ah. Then the rak'ah doesn't count for him. If the ma'mum says Allahu Akbar, standing, and then saying Allahu Akbar, and then going down to ruku'ah, and while he's going down to ruku'ah, the imams start moving, going up from ruku'ah. The rak'ah doesn't count. If a person is not sure, then the rak'ah doesn't count. So if a person is not sure, then he does not count this rak'ah. So whatever rak'ah the person enters behind the imam counts as his first rak'ah with all what the first rak'ah means, with the fatiha, surah, extra surah, if he's standing, if he has time. And then the second rak'ah will be his second rak'ah with the imam. This second rak'ah for the ma'mum can be the third rak'ah for the imam, can be the fourth, it doesn't, you know, it depends on when did he join the imam. So uh, he, he would follow the imam, of course, in all of the movements. So that's why a person, for example, his first rak'ah might be the second rak'ah for the imam, so he would sit with the tashahud and he would say that the first tashahud with the imam normally, even though this is the first rak'ah for him. And then the third rak'ah, the second rak'ah, then the third rak'ah, and then after the imam makes salam, he gets up and he makes up the last rak'ah for him, which is the fourth rak'ah. And it's something that once a person enters the, the masjid and the imam is making the salah, a person should follow the imam in whatever position the imam is in whether the imam standing, ruku'ah, sujood, or sitting, because he'll get the reward of what he reached 
And as one of the ulama, they said, what if that sajda that you would make, even though rak'ah is gone, it doesn't count as a rak'ah, but what if this sajda that you would make would be the reason for you to enter Jannah? So, and there are many, of course, situations with the masbuk, but this is in general. The masbuk is the one that comes late for the salah, and uh, he has to make up the rest of the salah. As we know that the imam, he stands in the middle, in front of all other people. And if there is one only with the imam, he would stand right next to him on his right side. And the woman, if she's leading women for the Salatul Jama'ah, she stands with them in the same line in the middle. And the women, when they're praying with the men, they stay behind the men. Uh, and we talked about that also, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet والسلام, as we heard also that he would, since he's the Imam, he would make sure that the rows are lined up and you'd say, Aqimu sufufakum wa tarasu. These words are from the Sunnah. It's not just that people say in it, but this is from the Sunnah. Sawu sufufakum fa inna taswaita sufufi min iqamati salah and so on. And we talked also about that. So to make the row straight and it's something that affects the hearts even of the people. Um, then uh, one of the rulings to be considered is the different intentions. The different intentions between the imam and the ma'mum. What does that mean? A person praying Salatul Isha and someone comes into the masjid and he didn't pray Salatul Maghrib. So he joins the imam with the intention of praying Maghrib or praying Isha. Right? Also, there is differences of opinions here. But to, um, in principle, a person can have a different intention than the imam. And the evidence of that is what Mu'adh radiallahu anhu he used to pray with the Prophet sallallahu salatul isha. And then he goes to his people and he would lead them in salatul isha. He's praying sunnah and they're praying farut. And he, so this is permissible for the intentions to be different from the Imam and the Ma'mum. And if a person pray in Asr, the people behind him, they can pray with the intention of Dhuhr or vice versa, as long as they make the Salah correct. But then the problem comes in if the Imam is praying Isha and the Ma'mum is praying Maghrib behind him. Right? So the Ma'mum is supposed to pray only three rak'ah. So if that happened, then and the Ma'mum started the Salah from the beginning with the Imam. He prays the first Raka'ah with him, the second Raka'ah with him, the third Raka'ah. Then the Imam gets up for the fourth Raka'ah. And we know that the Imam has to be followed. And the Prophet ﷺ said, In the Majur al Imam Utamabi, the Imam has been made for you to follow him. So, therefore, what do you do then in this case? The ulama, they say, In that case, you're not supposed to follow him because you pray in Maghrib. So if you follow him, your salah is not valid. It's not going to be maghrib anymore. It's going to be just optional salah. But in that case, you would have to sit and to make your tashahud and make salam. <clears throat> because it's salatul maghrib for you. So this is a special case. And if a person doesn't want to do that, uh, and he wants to be away from all the differences of opinions, and he enters the masjid and the imam is praying Isha, and he didn't pray maghrib for whatever valid reason, then... He can just pray with the Imam as Nafl Salah because he has to join the Jama'ah and then after that he prays Maghrib and then Isha. But in principle, it's okay for the Imam to have a different intention than the Ma'mum as long as the Ma'mum he gets his Salah in the proper way. Uh, what if the Imam, and I'm giving just some Masail, some issues that can come up in the Salah and probably you might have questions. Uh, but what if the Ma'mum um, breaks his salah. If a person breaks his salah during the salah, he has to get, he has to leave it. It's a mandatory thing. It's not permissible to continue in the salah when the person broke his salah, broke his wudu. So he has to leave. And if he's shy to leave, people might think, you know, that he, you know, it's it's embarrassing. Then he can hold his nose or something like this, as it's mentioned in some of the hadith, as if he is his nose is bleeding or something. It's not lying. But what if the imam, uh, and of course, if the ma'mum leaves, the row behind them, when they see a, an opening, someone should step up and fill that 
uh, opening in the line. And that does not break the salah and actually something that is very stressed to be done. Um, if the imam breaks his wudu, that also mandatory for him to leave the salah because it's not permissible for him to continue the salah when he broke his wudu. So what should he do? He should leave the salah and pull someone from behind him to continue the salah. That's why the Prophet وسلم, he said in the authentic hadith, let those who be behind me are the people of wisdom or intellect and knowledge. Why? Because they would know the rulings of the salah. They would <coughs> correct the imam. If something happens to the imam, then they would step up and they would finish the salah. And the imam then would go make wudu or so, and he comes back and he joins the salah as a ma'moom, and he will continue the salah accordingly. So this is with regards to breaking the wudu. One of the things also that come up is that if a person comes into the masjid and the lines are completed and there's nobody, there's no space for him in the lines, can he pray alone behind the lines? First of all, there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, لا صلاة لمنفرد خلف الصف. It is not permissible for someone to pray behind the lines alone. And uh, what that means is, which is very clear, and the ulama, they are upon this opinion, of course, if there is a space in the line and the person does not fill that space and he chooses to pray behind the lines alone, willingly like that, that breaks the sal his salah. It is not permissible. But what if there's no space for him? Can he line up alone on a separate row behind the imam? If there's no space, right? yes, it's permissible. And should a person pull someone from the uh, front line to pray with him? No, he shouldn't. Because there's no evidence that this is something to be done. Plus the person he came to pray in the first row, for example, why should he be deprived of this? And as, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا استطعتم. Be dutiful to Allah to the best of your ability. So if a person you know, would not find a spot, then it's, he should fill in. Uh, the place. If people are in the exceptional rulings, like in COVID and things like this, where there's spaces between people, between the people, you know, people then you know, there's a space. Literally, there's a space, physical space. But a person would pray alone behind the line. There's no harm since this is an exceptional situation. Till things go back to normal, inshallah ta'ala. Um, Salatul Jama'ah, as we as we heard about the importance of it and the virtue of it. Something that a Muslim um, should never miss. I'm talking about men. It's mandatory for men. That's why if someone missed it in the masjid, then he should pray, make sure that he pray jama'ah at home, but never to miss salatul fard in jama'ah. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not make it an obligate, obligatory thing for the women, but for the women, they get the rewards if they make sure that they are upon uh, this in their homes and making sure that their, uh, the men in the household, they go to the masjid and they help them to go to the masjid, and they help them to do Salatul Jama'ah. Um, one of the good deeds to be done is that uh, if a person missed Salatul Jama'ah, is that someone would give him a sadaqah, charity, to pray with him. And this hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anh, that the messenger saw, sallam, he saw a man praying alone, and he was praying Salatul Fard. And he said, أَلَا رَجُلٌ يَتَصَدَّقُ عَلَى هَذَا فَيُصَلِّيَ مَعَا he said, is there any man that would give sadaqah for that person and he prays with him? So when you see someone enter the masjid, for example, and he people had already prayed and he's praying alone, right? And you join with him in the salah, you're giving him sadaqah, which is a sadaqah, an act of charity, free, free of charge. There's no money that you pay, but this is the generosity of a Muslim to give uh, to someone to help him to make uh, to help him to make the, the, the more reward. So this is one of the practices. It's not like the person would ask for people to lead them in the salah. You know, because if a person, if you come and, and the salah is over, is finished, you know, it's there is no need for you to go ask for people to pray with you. Right? You already came with the intention of praying salatul jama'ah and you missed it. So then just, and that's what the practice of the companions of the Allah anhum 
in which they would pray. They would, whoever missed the salah, they would stand and they would pray on their own. If, the, if it's one, if it's a group of people, they can pray jama'ah even though the issue of the second jama'ah and the third jama'ah is an issue in fiqh. And uh, some of the ulama, they uh, forbade it because otherwise it opens the door for people to make multiple jama'at in the masjid and they have their own intentions and evil intentions and different sects and different groups and things like this. And this can be a, a sign of fitan, especially when the leader of the country or so is the one that leads the people in the salah. But anyway, so in the normal situations that people have, if a person alone and he enters the masjid and the salah is, is over, the proper way to do it is just to find a, a sutra and you make your fard salah alone, right? And if someone sees you praying alone, then it's a good thing to give him sadaqah that is to come and join with him, even if it's after Salatul Asr, because the hadith in Bukhari that was, if it was even after Salatul Asr. And a person already prayed Salatul Asr, he can give sadaqah like this by giving, by uh, making the, you know, praying behind or next to the person to uh, give him more rewards. Uh, one of the things, and that's one last thing before we finish, inshallah ta'ala, which is a very important one, and I hope that everybody's with me, is that, um, that many people, they don't pay attention to this ruling. When the imam makes salam in the salah, people behind the imam should not move, should not leave the line, till the imam turns his face towards the ma'moom. So when the imam makes, us, makes salam, and he stays for a little bit and you know, facing the qibla, uh, whether in saying, Astaghfirullah, 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 Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, like this, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam wa tabarakta hadha al-jalil wa ikram then a sign that the imam had finished the salah is he that he would turn his face, as the Prophet ﷺ used to do that. Kana yukbiru ala nas He would turn around and face the people. And because the imam, if he makes salam, he might remember that he missed something or he might have to make sujood al saho or something like this. So therefore, people have to wait and sit. And if after Fajr and Maghrib, the Imam is still sitting, facing the Qibla, saying 10 times, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu mulku lahu alhamdi yuhi wa imitu ala kulli shayin qadir. Before he moves, then the Ma'moom should be patient and wait in their spot till the Imam finishes and then he turns his face towards the Ma'moom. And the reason why I said that is because many people, that once the imam, they give salam, they run. No, they should have at least the patience to wait for the imam to turn his face to the ma'mumin. And then they can leave, even though it's best for them, of course, to sit and finish the adhkar. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll stop here, inshallah. And there are many, of course, many rulings and many masail. But uh, just to remind us of the importance of salatul jama'ah the importance of knowing these rulings because it's a great, it's the greatest job of the day. It's the most important thing in one's life. After the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to perfect our salah. That's why we have to know this, these rulings and to be, uh, to educate one another and to be patient with it and to, um, to seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by applying it. Okay, we'll stop here inshallah because of the next class. بارك الله فيكم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله